Welcome back everybody, Ryan and Ben, RB Reptiles. We're here to show you some ball pythons and we're also going to show you how to tube feed trouble feeder snakes. Stay tuned. So one of the tips we got this year, guys, about starting our pygmy pythons is to start them out on turkey baby food because they're trouble feeders to start because they're usually eating lizards in the wild. And to get them on the rodents takes a little bit of time, especially since they're so tiny, you gotta find really small rodents. So rather than try to force feed them like parts of pinks and stuff like that, this is like, I tried it already once. It worked out pretty good. So what I like to do anyway when I'm dealing with these little guys is I don't like to use gloves because they're real tiny and I need to have a good grip on them without hurting them. So I'll just go in here, grab this little guy. This guy's had one meal of turkey liquid. I grab them by the head. I kind of grab their tails like this so they can't sort of wiggle around. And, and you're this being is gentle. Being super gentle. I don't want to hurt this animal. The whole point is to keep the thing alive, for crying out loud. <laughs> so this is a flexible catheter, right? So it's not going to damage this animal at all. What I do is I kind of pull down on the jaw like that with my one finger so I can slide it in. And this is way easier when I'm not worried about putting it facing the camera. So I'm just going to do this now that I showed you. How about let me hop over your shoulder? So see, I pull down, opens the mouth a little, this goes in, real gentle, you're right in my ear. <laughs> Sorry, they're just really tiny. Real gentle, you see it sliding down the throat, I don't want to force anything. So I get it about halfway down, and I'm going to give them like half a cc, real slow. I'm going to pay attention so it doesn't like look like it's ballooning up. And I feel like that's probably good enough. And slowly, because the teeth can catch on it, I pull it out real slow so it doesn't catch a tooth and break it. And we're out. You can see it has a nice little meal in there. Not a ton. It's like, not like a huge rat lump sitting in there. But once it's down there like this, he's probably not gonna regurge it, right? So now, boom, quick and easy meal. I think it's low stress, probably it's gotta be way less stress than forcing a piece of a thing down with tweezers, but yeah. So basically I do this one week and then next week, like yesterday before this, I gave it a, a day old mouse pink, didn't need it. So I'm gonna give it the turkey. Next week, I'm gonna do the same thing. Day old mouse pink, it doesn't take it. Next day, turkey. And the, the goal is, and what I've heard people having success with it is, you do that for a month or two, and they start taking food, and they start growing, and the thing is, once these guys hit a certain size, they just turn into dumpsters. And they'll eat anything you put in there, including your finger, <laughs> so. The goal is to get them to that size so we can just start throwing rodents in there and they'll be good to go. And uh, so far I'm happy with the way it's working out. So there you go. If you ever need to tube feed the stubborn snake, tiny little guy, even a big guy, they have larger ones of these if you have an, an issue with something, but that's the plan. Hopefully it's helpful. All right, guys, I'm gonna show you a couple of really exciting things we got going on in our incubator. And, uh, but I just real quick wanna say, can you guys hit that like button down below? We really appreciate it. And also make sure you go over to our other podcast channel. It's called Herp House Rock. It would really, really help us out if you guys could just hit that subscribe button. 
and uh, maybe, you know, listen to a couple podcasts. We have some really cool people on the podcast. This past week we had Greg Graziani. So uh, there's a pretty big name that you guys probably don't get to see on podcasts that often. So go check it out. It's a good time. This video has been brought to you by Pro Exotics. Pro Coco Exotics. <laughs> I just want to thank Robin Marklin for uh, hooking us up with shirts like this. Thanks, Robin. Robin right. actually is a sponsor. He actually is a sponsor, yeah. He's a for real sponsor. So, you know. Red okay. Lion Science. Red Lion Science. Go check it out. Grow, grow, grow. So we're going to show you guys what we got going on here in the incubator. Um, the next couple clutches. So we have all these full. Well, seven of them. Okay, seven of them. It looks cooler than it really is. Um, so uh, this is how we do our incubators. And yes, we have a clutch of clubrids up on top here. There's actually three clutches of clubrids up there. There's actually three clutches of clubrids up here. Two clutches of pulchra and one latisinctus clutch that came out of nowhere. So right now, what do we got coming up here? This is our fancy pants list. We have coming up here a pied possible het lavender to a het lavender uh, coming up at the end of the month as well as a killer leopard clown which is a super pastel leopard clown visual to a ghi fire um is that a possible arroyo uh, uh, I forget. it's the same clutch but i don't think hard so. to say um so we got those two coming up you guys are gonna have to stay around to see that at the end of the month really excited about some stuff ryan what snakes do you think are gonna lay next um Let's talk about that real quick. We have this super fire girl that I'm expecting to lay any day now. She is actually possibly a whole bunch of other things from Powerline Reptiles. So she's coming up. Then we have this girl, Enchi Butter, that was bred to a oh, the Pastel Lori Hidden Gene Woma. And we got this uh, pastel scale head that ovulated, bred to lemon blast scale head. And we got uh, this lavender albino girl that was bred to the jalopy. And we got this super lorry that was also bred to pastel. Lori Hidden Gene Wilma. And that's it. That was a lot of work on your end. So if you guys can do us a favor, comment down below what clutches you guys are most excited about this year. So what are your pairings and what do you guys have going on? Because we really want to know what you guys have going on. Um, it's really exciting for us to live through you guys to see you know what else is out there. We're and watching your videos, we're watching your clutch cuttings and or not clutch cuttings, however you swing, whatever. We, we love everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we want to interact with you guys. Make sure you guys uh, talk to us about it. We are bored at home. We can't go anywhere. So, okay. All right, guys, let's talk males. So a lot of times when people first get in and I'm one of them, I was like, man, I want to get a whole bunch of really cool males because males like that's what you need. Right. And it's not always. Um, so I did get a lot of males in the beginning and uh, we were a little male heavy, but uh, you know, Maybe one of the smart things is, is to buy a female that's really expensive, put some money into a male, a female, and um, sit on her for a little while until she gets to size, and then buy a male. Um, that, that could be how you do it. But I would just wanted to go through real quick what males we have we're working with, and so you guys can kind of get an idea of where we can go with you know, all of our breedings over the next year or so. Um, we obviously have which I've talked about um, several times is the voodoo who I thought was about to bite my face just now. Um, but Ryan would say that I'm being a big pansy. So this is the voodoo. Um, we've been showing this boy off kind of a lot. He's getting big enough to where uh, he's about to start breeding. And I know it's the first time in a while that we heard the cat in the background <laughs> and Ryan's laughing. But this is the voodoo from Bob Vu. And we have Super OD Triton. So I'm not going to show all of our males off, just a few. But this boy is getting unbelievably beautiful. As he ages, it's just super bright. So this is a Super Orange Dream 
Pastel Fire Engie. And the Triton is the Pastel Fire Engie Orange Dream. And it creates this Triton head on the top, this head stamp. But if he can stop moving, maybe. But uh, this is since it's a Super Orange Dream, it really kind of breaks it up along the neck here. Um, and also you can see how clean it is. And you get this uh, pixelation along the dorsal. And just this crazy flaming up the side. So this is a, another interesting project that we're, we've been talking about a little bit lately. This is a Enchi Fire Inferno. And um, the Inferno is Pastel Yellow Belly Hidden Gene Woma. So this is an Enchi. And Granite and Fader. <laughs> and Granite and Fader possibly, I suppose. So this is an Enchi Fire Pastel Yellow Belly Hidden Gene Woma. And the Inferno stuff is really cool. It's something that, you know, when we first got into ball pythons that Ryan really wanted to, to get into and hit and um, Hinji Moma stuff I think is starting to come around and I think uh, we're really excited to be working with it. We have a lot of Hinji Moma in our collection. So this is a possible white lace clown. possible head clown. So the lace jean. Turn them towards me, so. no. So the white lace jean is, uh, you know, the super form of lace. And you can see how clean it is and how bright it is. And when you work this into other belly. combinations, see how yellow, like it bleeds into the belly and then the white, white belly. Why oh, do you keep moving around like that? <laughs> Man, some people, their camera skills. So the white lace is something that we're excited to be working with and the whole lace project. Ryan's picked up a handful of lace animals and uh, yeah, so another really good male to be working with. Project. So this is a killer leopard clown. Obviously it's a visual clown and it's super pastel leopard clown. Um, he's bred for us several times and he's still breeding for us and uh, Ryan's talking about replacing him at some point which is kind of weird to say we're not you know it's not like we're replacing anybody because we don't like them a but, minute but it would be next season we love these but uh sometimes you know you just want to produce something else and go in a different direction things like that so so just two more males i want to show you real quick ones that we don't show on the the uh videos that often is this beautiful male here and uh, we produced this one. This is a GHI pewter. So it's a black pastel, pastel GHI. And he's a good breeder for us. We are happy to be working with a GHI um, gene. And when I first got into ball pythons, GHIs were still really expensive. And I definitely wanted to have one because it's got to have it. You got to have it. So. It's a GHI. <laughs> so this boy we don't put on the videos that much, but he's a solid breeder for us. This is a male that we produced that is, uh, we would be remiss if we didn't talk about because this is a banana Enchi, which is cool. But then we added Lori to it. So this is a Enchi banana Lori. And you can see the Lori influence in between the pattern. I know that there's black speckling, which is cool and all, but also it gives a different shade in here. And then you can also see some of the, the different shade right in this area here. Some of these flames. The light is washing it out. Can you come forward or stuff? Sure. Better. How about that? Yeah. So you can see in the flames here, this uh, dark spots and how weird outline it is. And the Enchi really tightens up the back. Like this line is usually way thicker on a regular lorry and it gives you blushing in the dorsal. Yeah, so NG Banana Lorry, powerhouse male for us, in my opinion. And we have him breeding this year, which can't wait to get some super lorry stuff. Um, pastel lorry female he bred. Yep, pastel lorry female, so. Cooking in the incubator. Yeah, so pastel lorry, NG Banana Lorry. So that could be super Lori stuff. I'm so excited. This is great. And um, we get to prove out a little bit more if Lori and Enchi are a Lelic. Yeah, that's true too. Uh, I guess it would be 
You wouldn't produce a Super Lori Enchi. Because we have been working this project for a pretty long time trying to figure it out. Yeah. And uh, people have produced some Super Lori stuff, which is exciting. Um, but we're all still trying to figure it out. And, you know, I don't want to say the books are, are set on that. Um, but we are definitely getting into it. I think that Hidden Gene Woma and Lori have an interesting combination. They kind of, when they were put together, because we have... Uh, past the Lori Hidden Gene Woma um, mail. The which second to the bottom of that one? Nope. Other one. This one? Yep. So, this guy, since we're talking about the hid the Lori, past the Lori Hidden Gene Woma, this one has that graying like a Super Lori does a bit. Um, so it makes me think that uh, Hidden Gene Woma and Lori have something going on and, head, and we're trying to prove that out How yeah the, the head's real cool yeah it's that crazy x so there's a lot of fun things that you can do with uh the lori gene but still a lot of potential but yeah these are some of our mails that we're working with show us your mails send me pictures send us messages follow us on instagram um you know check out our facebook it's it's fun to interact with you guys and it's fun to see what you guys have going on. So we appreciate it. And uh, that's what our ball pythons are that we're showing today. Thanks so much for watching again, guys. Do us a favor, give us a thumbs up, comment down below if you like what you see, subscribe to the channel, check out Herp House Rock. Ben has been crying at night because we're not getting I subs. I don't know what's up with him. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Thanks guys. Synthus, which is one of my favorite uh, poultry. Nope. Oh, one of my favorite um, porphyraceous. Good grief, Ben. <clears throat> you pretend like you know snakes. I thought I did know snakes. <laughs> I've been doing it for nine years. I've only been doing it for nine years. Okay. And Makes people sick when you do it that way. They said I gotta get excited. Energy. <laughs> Energy, Ben. Uh, <laughs> Energy, Ryan. <laughs> How is it so late already? And that's it. That was a lot of work on your end. You like those noises I was making? I did. <clears throat> it's um, picking up the bounty paper towels as a face. It is a face. <laughs> this is the face of R&B reptiles right here. You know. There was a time at the beginning of this where we could not get these. <laughs> Don't be bragging on, I can't even believe we're putting this in a video. We're gonna get robbed. There's so much paper anymore. Dude, we haven't had issues getting uh, toilet paper in a long time, so. We can buy it by the case now. I don't even know. People are like, it all, it all evened out. I'm only shooting you from Dude. like mid belly up so that they can't see you adjust your shirt. I have not adjusted my shirt once on camera today. I had green on my finger. What did I just rub that has green on it? Uh, probably the green marker, the clutch list on the incubator. Ah! <laughs> Messing up all my records. Uh, that's, so I hope not. <laughs> the fancy pants clutch list. Okay, so this is a super orange dream pastel fire enchi. Yep. That's it. <laughs> So this is a super, <laughs> let me do that one more time. <laughs> so dumb, because for some reason I thought that that was, had something else in there for a second. Ryan picked up a whole bunch of toilet paper lately and we're really excited to be working with that um, for some of our deep cleaning needs. <clears throat> and uh, you know, he enjoys uh, long walks on the beach and hanging out with females, you know, doing his thing. And then this one.